Welcome back. We are that adventure couple, and this is Shanghai, Thailand. There are fabulous Buddhist temples all over Shanghai, and in this episode, we will take you to as many as we can find. We'll start off with one of my favorites, the Wat Hue Pla Kang Temple. So in this location, it's about 10 minutes away from the airport, and there are actually three temples in this location, which makes it a really great stop. First, we'll visit the 79 meter tall statue of the Goddess of Mercy, Guan Yin. The entire inside of the structure is decorated with elaborate stucco sculptures that are all painted completely white. Visiting this temple complex is free, but if you'd like to take the elevator to the 25th floor of the statue so you can get these spectacular views, it'll cost you 40 baht, which is about one US dollar. The second building at Huey Plakang is a temple built in the Thai style. With the exception of the red roof, the entire building is white. Even on the inside, all the decorations are white, including the Buddha himself. The third structure is a nine-story pagoda built in the Chinese style. On each floor, you'll find various statues and decorations, and if you take the stairs all the way to the top, you'll get 360-degree views of Shanghai. Our next stop on our tour of the temples is the Blue Temple. Construction started in 2005 and was completed in 2016. Since then, this temple has become quite popular for its ornate designs and its unique blue color. This temple is beautiful, but unlike Hue Pla Kang, we felt like it was a bit over-commercialized. Due to its popularity, there are always crowds at the Blue Temple, so don't go into it expecting it to be a serene experience. Now, if you're looking for a temple that's that hidden gem, you want Wat Doi Insi. I call this one the hidden gem because we came in the middle of the day and we were literally the only people here. This garden area in front of the Buddha statue is absolutely beautiful. and We happened to have some bird seed with us so we were able to feed the peacocks while we were here. One of the main reasons people visit Doi Insi is to get this spectacular view. In my opinion, this is one of the best views in Shanghai. After enjoying the view and feeding the peacocks, we ventured on down the hill behind the statue. Not far from the lookout point, we found this beautiful temple. This is the Buddha Bucha Ubasat temple. It's in the middle of the woods, so there's a lot of wildlife and stuff here. It's really nice to just take a walk around and take it all in. I'm not sure if this forest complex is part of Doi Insi, but we were the only tourists here and the complex is quite large. We enjoyed walking around, taking in the beauty and enjoying nature. If you've been to this temple in Shanghai and know what it's called or really anything about it, leave a message in the comments so we can learn more. We visited two cave temples in Shanghai, the first being Wat Taham Para. This temple was pretty neat to visit, and since it's a little ways outside of town, you really don't have to fight the crowds.
In this location, in addition to the main cave temple, there's also some shrines outside. And since the cave is located next to a river, there's even a Buddha out overlooking the water. Next up is the Tupu Cave Temple. This one was really interesting because we just sort of stumbled across it by accident. We were driving by and we were like, oh look, that looks like a temple on the side of the cliff. So when we stopped, we found this temple that was all overgrown and everything was covered in dust and sort of run down. I'm not sure if this temple is actually abandoned or if there just hasn't been anybody here for a while, but we were definitely the only ones here and it made it a very eerie and serene experience. Our last stop on our tour of the temples is Wat Rong Kun, or more famously known on Instagram as the White Temple of Shanghai. <laughs> we thought if we got here early, we could uh, beat the crowds, but doors open. doors open at eight and the, the tour buses were here before eight to get in. Due to its popularity, the crowds can be thick at the White Temple. We opted to not go in first thing in the morning and we came back in the evening just before close and I'm so glad we did. Throughout most of the day, there will probably be a steady line of people making their way through the temple. But most of the crowd clears out just before close, which allowed us to get this perfect Instagram shot right at sunset. The temple is beautiful with its ornate statues and the grounds are absolutely immaculate, but this was not our favorite temple to visit in Chiang Rai. Due to its popularity, I feel like it's been over commercialized. Of all the temples that we visited, this is the only one that charged an entrance fee. And throughout the day, there is just so many people that it sort of ruins the ambiance. Throughout the temple complex, you'll find depictions and sculptures from modern day pop culture and to me, that just seems like it's out of place at a Buddhist temple. There is, however, more here than just the temple itself. There is an art gallery that displays paintings and drawings that were created by the artists that designed the temple. There's also this beautiful golden building that nobody on the internet seems to know what this building is used for. We had a great time taking in all of these beautiful structures and soaking up all of the Buddhist culture. But there is so much more to see in Chiang Rai, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss our next episode when we take you beyond the temples. <laughs> <laughs>